So you need to know what Xbox version you have, or maybe you just want to learn a bit more about the hardware. Well, you have come to the right place. Stay tuned. You might be wondering, why do I need to know what version I have? Or, are there pros and cons to each? The answer is yes. In a nutshell, versions 1 through 1.5 are the most mod friendly. These have the ability to both be TSOP flashed and have their RAM upgraded from 64 megabytes to 128. As for the 1.6 and the 1.6b, Microsoft took action against the mod scene and tried to make it more difficult, which they succeeded in, but honestly, they didn't make it much more difficult. Basically, all they did was remove the flashable TSOP, or updatable is a better term, took away the pads that allow for RAM upgrades, and disconnected two pins on the LPC, which were power and data if you're curious. Obviously, the mod scene figured out what they had done pretty quickly, and really only added one extra step to the simple process of adding a mod chip. Now, aside from certain motherboard revisions, the Xbox also saw a few changes in other hardware, such as disk drives, hard drives, and power supplies, but I will get into that after we decipher our motherboard. Okay, so there are a few ways of telling what version is hiding in that case, without having to open it up. These should really only be used as quick reference, as it's not 100% accurate. But if you're out picking up one second hand and you want to maximize your chances of getting the most mod friendly versions, it's better than nothing. All this requires you to do is flip over the Xbox and take a look at the sticker with the barcode, serial number, and manufacturing date. Fair warning, these can be rubbed off over time and depending on how many times it was carelessly thrown into a backpack to be taken to a LAN party, you know, the good old days, it could be unreadable. Also, apparently you hooked a serial number to your Xbox Live account and people would remove the sticker prior to selling it as to not have their Xbox Live account altered. I lived in the middle of nowhere with dial-up internet as a kid, so I have no input on this and I can't recall ever buying one with a missing sticker. If it was opened, usually the sticker was just cut. First way is to just look at the date. Its format is year, month, day, but let's just focus on the year. 2001 through 2 is most likely a 1.0. 2002 through 3, maybe a 1.1. 2003 through 4, it could be a 1.2 through a 1.5. 2004 through, we will just say 2005 because that's when Nvidia stopped making the Xbox's GPU. Now, there are still other methods of determining by still looking at the sticker on the bottom. These focus on the serial number, so let's get familiar with what these numbers mean. L is the number of the production line in the factory. The N represent the number of Xboxes produced during a work week. The Y is the last digit of the production year. The Ws are the number of the week of the production year. And the Fs are the factory codes. Now the first way is just looking at the factory codes. This is incomplete and not very specific at all. As you can see, all it really tells you is if you have a version one, and even then, who really knows? Okay, so there are two methods of determining what version you have, but this requires opening up the Xbox. The first method is the only one I use, and it's 99% accurate. I'm factoring in the odd occurrences, which are always possible. We will first need to get familiar with a few components on the motherboard. Firstly, the video chip. Second is the GPU heatsink. Third is the power supply connector. Fourth is the Xbox's RAM. Fifth is the LPC. Start with looking at the video chip. If it says Consent, you have a fan on your GPU, and you have a single row power supply connector, then you either have a 1 or a 1.1. If instead you have a power supply connector that has two rows, it's either a 1.2 or a 1.3. One thing to note is that the OG V1 was the only revision to have a GPU fan. It was replaced from then on with this updated version of heatsink and is considered to be an upgrade. That and the little fan is prone to failure after many hours of use and no possible way to clean out the dust without disassembly. Now, if you have a focus chip, you either have a 1.4 or a 1.5. Lastly, if you have an Excalibur chip, these are easily identifiable by the Xbox logo printed on it. You either have a 1.6 or a 1.6B. To tell the difference, we will need to take a look at the RAM chips. If they say Samsung, you have a 1.6. And if they say Hynix, then you have a 1.6B. I've never come across a 1.6B, so I have no visual aid for this one, but it shouldn't be too tough to figure out if you in fact have one. 
As I've said before, the 1.6s are the least mod friendly and I would consider them to be the least desirable, a version 1 being the most. Of course, this is just my personal opinion. The 1.6s being newer have more than likely been used less, giving the best likelihood of the disk drive lasting the longest. And since these are creeping up in age, disk drive failure is only a matter of time. I have also seen people claim that the 1.6s are quicker. I have no comment on that as I've never dailied one but it would be interesting to see if that was true. Microsoft did make the board a bit more compact, which for one thing resulted in not being able to upgrade the heat sinks with the Iceberg Pro 4s. Not a huge deal nowadays considering finding those is near impossible, since they aren't being made anymore. And it's a pretty extreme modification that you should really only do if you want the coolest, most modded Xbox possible, or you've slimmed your case. Now, the last method is by looking at the motherboard and looking for a little white sticker that says kernel, then gives you a number. All this tells you is what kernel version is written onto the TSOP chip, so have a look at this to figure out your version. Okay, so now you've figured out what Xbox version you have, but let's go over a few of the different main components Microsoft used in their Xboxes. We will start with the disk drives. There are four different ones, Thompson, Philips, Samsung, and Hitachi. Most people back in the day considered the Samsung drive to be the absolute best and the Thompson to be the worst. My personal experience on this is different. I have more broken Samsung drives than any other model. Also, they are more likely to be a bit sticky sometimes. People say that both the Philips and Samsung drives are the best at reading burnt discs. Again, I have no problem with Thompson's reading burnt media but I load most of my media straight from the hard drive anyways, so my experience is limited here. I try to use the disk drives as little as possible to keep them from wearing out. I won't pick a best drive as I've never owned a Hitachi. Those are definitely the rarest out of them. Moving on to hard drives, there are four different models, two Western Digitals and two Seagates. There isn't much to note about these, other than that the first Western Digital was an eight gig and all others are 10 gig and that Microsoft didn't let you have the extra space, so neither is better in an unmodded Xbox. So let's take a look at the power supplies. I'm not too sure how many different ones there are. I've only come across these four. Two of them are by Delta, and then we have a Foxlink, and a Minabia, or Minebi, which you should ignore the mess of wires. It had a single row connector that I removed for some reason forever ago. I have no opinion on which is best and which is worst. An old shop called Llama says that the Mindbees are the best based on how well they are built, but the one I have is definitely broken. On another note, early Xbox power supplies from version 1 to 1.1 had the risk of catching fire due to solder joints coming loose over time. Microsoft basically ignored the problem and issued a new power wire. That didn't do anything to solve the problem, but it did keep your house from burning down, so that's a plus. I'm unaware of any fixes other than to just not use an older power supply. It might be wise to just reflow the main connections, but I don't really know. When I was a kid, my first modded Xbox experienced this problem of catching fire. Luckily, I was in the room playing it at the time, but I don't recall what power supply it was as this was a good 10 years ago. Most people claim to have the most issues with the Foxlink ones, but I know single row deltas are definitely the earliest used, so just keep that in mind. Well, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. To everyone who watched my first version of this video before I took it down, thanks for checking it out again. As always, if this video helped you, please leave a like and subscribe for more modding goodness. If you have any questions or feel like I missed something, be sure to leave a comment below. If you want to stay up to date with the channel, please follow me on Twitter at TechnoOnTop. Be sure to check out some of my previous videos if you haven't already. I'm sure I have something that you would want to watch. Until next time, peace.